Hi, I'm Dave. This morning I'm going to help you and your team get up and running with your new D240 communication system. So I have everything in front of me here for a six user system. Six users because the bank charger is for six radios. You can actually have any number of users from two to two hundred, but six is a really common number and it's an easy way to get started. So let's start by assembling a D240 radio. Let's look at what's in the box. First we have our manual. The manual's on disk. There's a lot of features to the D240 that we aren't going to cover here. Please look at the manual when you get a chance. I am going to cover the most important features though, so we will get you up and running. Okay, so we have the D240 radio. It's the smallest, lightest DMR radio. I know DMR doesn't mean a lot to you, but it is the latest standard in digital, and, it'll, and it ensures that it will work with all kinds of other devices, and we'll be adding to the abilities of these systems over the years. The battery. When we put the battery on the radio, we have to do two things. First, we slide the radio on from the back. It's pretty self-explanatory. Now, this is really important, though. There's a lock on the bottom of the radio. I need you to lock those. You need you to be very careful to lock those. And we'll see why later. Okay, there's an antenna. The antenna just screws on, like so. Okay, now we have a whole radio. We also have a belt clip. Not everyone will use the belt clip. Some people just drop the radio on the inside pocket of their lab coat, and it'll be thinner without the clip on. We're just going to put the clip on the radio like so. Screw it in tight. The easiest way to get it tight, you do want to push down hard with your thumb here. Last but not least, the multicolored skins. Okay, I'm going to make this one a yellow one. All we're going to do is put the skin on like this. Again, we want to be absolutely sure that battery door is locked because if you drop the radio while it's in the skin, well, how can you tell whether the battery came off with it locked or not? And there we go. Our D240 is completely assembled. Let's put the box aside and we'll get started on the next one. So next, let's set up our bank charger. Bank charger has six slots for six radios. There's a DC power cord and it's going to plug into it. Uh, plug into the back here. You'll find there's a switch on the side here. Turn it on. The lights will come on. And now all we have to do is put our radios in the charger. D240s are fully assembled. We've set them in the charger. Now what do I do? Okay, let's talk about charging. The bank charger for the D240 is an all-electronic charger. When the battery's fully charged, it'll shut itself off. So we can drop the radio in every night and just let it charge for the, uh, for the evening with confidence it's not going to damage the batteries. The batteries have no memory. Don't worry about whether it's fully charged, almost charged, almost empty. Whenever, you, uh, whenever you're not using it, just drop it in the charger. You should get 10 to 15 hours of, of good use out of them on each charge. When the battery's fully charged, the light will turn green like this one is. When you first drop the radio into the charger, the light will turn red. Red light means it's charging. If when you drop the radio into the charging bay, it goes right back to green, sometimes that will mean that it's not making a good connection. So we'll just shake the radio and make sure it goes red and stays red. 
Of course, if it's fully charged, it will just go to green. Now that the radios are charging, let's look at how to operate them. Okay, the power button is the bottom of three buttons on the side of the radio. We'll hold that button for about five seconds, and that'll turn it on. Four. And we just heard a tone, and you heard it announce a channel. And that's important. Whenever you change the channel Five, on this radio, six, it'll announce the seven. new channel. It's really useful when you're using earpieces because you don't have to look down at the radio. There's two knobs on top of the radio. You see I've already operated the channel knob. That's the bottom of these two knobs. Eight, seven. The top is a volume control. You'll find that the D240 gets really loud if you want it to, so make sure when you turn it on you turn the volume down a bit first. Let's talk about the difference between your new digital communicators and your old analog radios. So far we've used channel 7. Channel 7 on our digital radio is very similar to your old analog radios. Everybody on channel 7 hears when one person keys up on channel 7. We have channel 7, 8, and 9 set up that way. Now remember, digital radios, they are never going to have interference because they work completely differently. With digital radios, one radio talks to another radio. Whereas with your old analog radios, the radio spoke on a frequency and anything listening on that frequency would hear. The downside of that is interference. With your digital communicators, you won't have that because what happens is one radio talks directly to another radio. It's almost like there's a, a phone number it dials. Okay, so even though channels 7 through 9 work very similar to your analog radios, in the background they aren't doing the same thing. We have two other kinds of channels available to us in digital. The first is an all-call channel. An all-call channel, and we have channel 10 set up that way, will reach every radio in the system regardless. So you can communicate to your entire team Think of it as uh, an intercom system. So in an emergency situation or even to say, okay, we're closing up, it's time for happy hour, you can reach everybody by switching to channel 10. The other kind of channel that digitals have available to them are private channels. A private call channel is literally a private communication. It's exactly like a cell phone calling another cell phone. You can't call and barge into that conversation. Nobody can call and barge into your private call conversation. Nobody can listen in on your private call conversation. That's what we reserve channels 1 through 6 for. Channel 1 calls radio 1. Channel 2 calls radio 2. Once somebody calls, on, calls another radio and that radio starts responding back, that's a, a private call and nobody else can get involved in it. Nobody else can hear it. They can't switch to the channel and listen to you. When we ship these radios to you, we label them. And, there, and six of the radios are labeled one through six. These are very important because these are the radios capable of a private call. If you need more than six private call radios, custom programming can be done at a small fee. So Black Diamond's analog CE240 was a super successful radio. It's in thousands of practices of different types and is the linchpin to so many teams improving their communications. The D240 goes on from there. The one thing we heard more than any other thing with the analog radio was that there would be a team member, usually the doc, who wants to be able to call for help but not listen in to everyone. There was an easy way to solve this with digital. What we did was we set up a scan function. So, the yellow radio Ten, nine. is going to be on channel 9, and that's going to be the doctor channel. Okay, so everybody works on channel 7, just like we talked about earlier, and the docs are on 9. 
Some of the other team members need to hear if Doc calls. And those team members are going to press the middle button on this radio. When you press it, just a short press. Scan start. You'll hear scan start. When you press it again, quit scan. You quit scan. While it's scanning, anyone on channel 7, 8, or 9 keying up will be heard by this radio. So we're going to start scan. scanning. Start. And, well, Ten, Doc, nine. as we discussed, is on channel 9. And when Doc keys up, this radio hears it. So now, this radio doesn't have to hear any of the chatter. That radio can talk back for the next five seconds and have a conversation. All without changing channels. So, that's our cool solution to that. You have to remember to put it into scan mode, and you have to remember every time you change channels, physically change channels, you do have to put it in scan mode all over again. Let's talk for just a moment about radio etiquette. Radio etiquette is simply the set of rules you set down for how people use their radios. Remember, when one person talks, it comes across on everyone's radios in most systems. So, if we follow a few simple rules, this won't be irritating. The first rule is that you always start with who do you want. Within a couple of weeks, if everyone starts with who do they want, the people that it is not for will not even hear it. Think about a pilot in an airplane. Air traffic control with lots of chatter, but they're concentrating on flying their airplane. When they hear their tail number, then they perk up and they communicate with air traffic control. It needs to be the same way in your practice. So always start with who do you want. Within two weeks you aren't going to hear it if it's not for you. It's often very, uh, very good to set up rules for who is whom. For instance, technician might be, it might be a call and it might be for a group of three or four people. But that way if you start with technician, they'll hear it. The next thing is Usually you say, what do you want? Okay, so, technician, I need help in operatory three. That's really all that has to go on. The hygienist says, says uh, exam, hygiene two. Doc knows to poke his head in as he goes past. So if we keep our conversations short, keep the joking to a minimum, and always start with who we want, your implementation will work much more smoothly. Our radios are set up and tested. We know how to use them. We know about etiquette. Now let's talk about your pieces. It's time to set them up. The linchpin of your system is the sentinel of your piece. This has some very special design features. This unit here is a microphone and push to talk. It's really important. The microphone is right here. It's on, in the little hole at the top of this. The ideal position for this is going to be four to six inches from your mouth, about like that, with that little hole pointed towards your mouth. If somebody sounds like they're talking in a tunnel and you're having trouble hearing them, more likely than not, it's turned like this sideways. Okay, so we're going to make sure this is pointed directly towards our mouth. We have this nice large front-facing button, and this is a really important part of the system because for those of you who work in a clinical setting, you use this, you can key up with the back of your wrist just like this, rather than having to change your gloves. Really important feature. Now let's talk about the part that actually goes in your ear. There's a couple of details. Okay. This is called a coil tube. You see this is easily removed and put back onto the earpiece. It just threads in. You just turn it. Most practices choose to give everything from here up to each individual employee so that they can maintain their own for hygiene purposes. Okay, The coil tubes are generally longer than they need to be as we ship them. When you get your coil tube Take it apart like this. Take that elbow off. And then take your scissors. 
and you want to trim this down, it's usually about a quarter of an inch to trim it. The important thing is this needs to fit tight over the top of your ear. So then we put, after we've trimmed it, we put our ear, our elbow back on. Now this is an ear tip, we call that, and that's what comes with, comes with all of them. These tend to be uncomfortable after an hour or two, so for the most part, we're going to get rid of them in the average office system. What we're going to use instead is a semi-custom ear mold. Custom ear molds could be used, attenuating ear molds. Very versatile. There's a lot of different things you can do with this, but this is the most common thing you're going to wear. We're simply going to put it on here like that. And this is going to go up over your ear, in your ear, and then you make sure that goes back behind your ear. Clip the, clip the speaker to your collar. You're completely wired up. You're ready to go. For those of you who wear protective garb, I would suggest just put this completely underneath the protective garb. You can still key it up this way, and there won't be any wires outside for spray or leaning over a patient to get in the patient's face. Let's connect our earpiece to our radio. The jack is on the side of the radio. There's a cover. Sometimes it's hard to get open. You might need a screwdriver. We'll plug this in. The wire goes up towards the top. It'll only plug in one way. Now we're ready to go. Private communication. Just put this on our hip. Speak four to six inches from the mic. Key it up. And that's all there is to it.